Add those together and the price for rebuilding a football giant is clear. Across this 10 year spell, an astounding million has been spent by the club. But I want more, I want more. And if they want more, we have to work, work hard to get it. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we set off for Birmingham to unravel the financial story of Aston Villa. Rewind to 2014, and Aston Villa found themselves battling in the lower ranks of the Premier League. However, a disastrous campaign two years later would spell relegation to the Championship. Ownership shifted twice during their time in the second tier, culminating with V-Sports leading the charge as Aston Villa reclaimed their spot in the top flight in 2019. Since then, Aston Villa have been on an upward trajectory, closing out this decade with a top half finish. On the managerial front, Villa Park has seen a revolving door of permanent managers throughout the decade. Lambert, Sherwood, Gard, Black, Di Matteo, Bruce, Smith, Gerard, Emery. Now let's turn our attention off the pitch. What unfolded behind the scenes? Aston Villa experienced a dip in revenue during their championship stint, but upon returning to the top flight, their income skyrocketed, reaching a peak of 280 million in 2023. So what drivers fueled this growth? Time for a deep dive into revenue streams. Beginning with gate receipts, Villa has rebounded from a low of under 11 million in 2017 to 19 million in 2023, with attendance now exceeding 41,000. As a percentage, gate receipts have dropped from nearly a quarter in 2019 to under 10% in 2023. This may in part be attributed to broadcasting revenues. At the end of this initial Premier League run, those revenues totaled 65 million. As parachute payments diminished in the Championship, these plummeted to 22 million. However, Villa's resurgence in the Premier League has now propelled these revenues to over 150 million. Sponsorship revenues also soared to 16 million, and likewise, commercial revenues surged to over 30 million. In terms of league position, clear disparities exist between the Championship, Villa's prior Premier League stint, and their current run in the top flight. On average, Premier League revenues have amounted to 148 million, more than double that of the Championship. Yes, of course, we are very happy and uh, was very important. And now, let's dive into profits. Unfortunately, the bottom line outlook isn't favourable for Villa. Apart from 2022, they've been in the red every year, with 2023 recording a staggering 117 million operating loss. There's an inverse correlation between league position and financial performance, with improved on-field results coinciding with larger losses. In fact, average Premier League losses of 52 million are greater than Villa's run in the Championship. What on earth is going on here? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. This with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Wages initially surged as Villa fought to maintain their Premier League status. Despite a reset following relegation, costs continued to escalate consistently. In 2023, there was a staggering 42% year on year increase in the wage bill, amounting to 194 million. We can see Villa took a significant gamble during their promotion campaign with staff costs soaring to 175% of championship revenues. In 2023, the investment in the playing squad resulted in staff costs now accounting for 89% of those record revenues. But how did these staff costs translate into points on the pitch for Aston Villa? In the championship, points came at 1 million apiece. Up in the Premier League, these have increased to 2 to 3 million each. The notable exception, Villa's relegation campaign, where their 17 points cost an astounding five and a half million each in staff costs. So after factoring in just wages, we see in all leagues declining profitability over time. Next up, operating costs. These have also been significant, with a notable increase observed in 2019 following promotion and a consistent rise in the latest Premier League campaign, amounting to 64 million in 2023. 
So what happened in 2019? This surge can be attributed to Villa's return to the Premier League. Promotion required an additional £30 million payment to the previous owners, settled by the club in July of that year. With regard to the current cost levels, there is less clarity, but we can see that £23 million was allocated to community, youth development and women's football. At EBITDA level, we can already see the price of relegation and indeed promotion back to the Premier League. Stadium and facilities, expenses related to long-term assets such as Villa Park. Here we see two standout numbers in 2016 and 2019. In 2016, following relegation, Villa wrote down the value of their freehold land and buildings, including Villa Park, by 45 million. But three years later, when EBITDA performance was at its worst, Villa banked 32 million in net income. The club sold Villa Park to its owners for 57 million, though it seems no cash was exchanged at the time. The outstanding amount remains unsettled four years later, though it may be offset by other sums owed to the owners. Finally, let's move on to transfer fees. With the exception of two seasons, Aston Villa incurred net transfer costs each year. In their latest Premier League campaigns, substantial expenses were incurred, beginning with 71 million in their first season back and an additional 70 million in 2023. The most lucrative year in terms of transfer profit was 2022, with the record-breaking transfer of Drac Grealish. However, this was counterbalanced by substantial investments in the playing squad, including players such as Watkins, Wendia, Bailey, Dina, Ings. 2023 saw continued investment, including Diego Carlos and Philip Coutinho. So we can see that Grealish sale was the sole reason to drive 2022 into the black. For all other years, Villa have been in the red. On average, the margin story is stark. The 2023 result means on average Villa have delivered 35% operating losses in the Premier League. For every £1 earned, 35p has been lost. Look, we'll see what happens. I understand the situation that we're in. Um... Let's see if cash aligns with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBIT dollar line items, tells a similar story. Other than 2014, cash has consistently flown out of Villa Park. Across the decade, 137 million has exited Villa's coffers. Now, let's shift our attention back to transfers. Again, cash has exited every year. Even with the Grelish sale, 2022 saw net outflows from Villa Park. Over these 10 years, a whopping 341 million has been invested in the playing squad, driven by their recent Premier League spell. Add those together and the price for rebuilding a football giant is clear. Across this 10-year spell, an astounding 479 million has been spent by the club. But I want more. I want more. And if they want more, we have to work, work hard to get it. So how much funding has been required? To offset those operational outflows as well as investing in the playing squad, Aston Villa has received total cash injections of 574 million over this 10-year spell the majority coming from their new owners since their promotion back to the Premier League. Will Aston Villa's investments begin to pay off? At the time of recording, Villa are in the hunt for lucrative Champions League football and have continued to bolster their commercial revenues. Will this cement Villa's place back amongst the elite? Only time will tell. Until next time.